Hey, Daddy. Why is Dad going so fast? But he has to have momentum. You're a good boy, Jasper. Yes, welcome back indeed. Okay, if you're new to our channel, then make sure you do subscribe. We have a weekly episode, obviously, every Sunday night, and we have over 180 episodes in the bank, so you can catch up on anything you've missed. <laughs> yes. And if you do love the uh, the content, then make sure that you do give us a thumbs up as well. Okay, this week's episode is absolutely awesome. One of my favourites to edit. Oh my gosh, so exciting. Three and a half years, we've never taken the van down on the beach until now. Yes, and we survived. We did, yes. It was a little nerve-wracking, but it was amazing. And so we are going to share all of that with you, plus all of the information and education that mm -hmm. comes along with dragging your van down on the beach, including tire pressures and what gear to drive in and all of those details that will hopefully help you if you are thinking about taking your rig down on the beach and you've never done it before. Yeah, either. look, what we did is really do a lot of research, mm. um, not only by watching YouTube, yeah. but talking to other campers, talking to other, uh, you know, fellow caravanners and asking them for this advice on what worked and what didn't. Mm. And so use this as a guide. And again, we'd encourage you to really look into your particular van, your setup and how you can get onto the beach because it is one of the best experiences oh. that we have ever had as a family. And we just can't wait for the next one. Oh, 100%. And now stay to the end of the episode as well because we've got an awesome sand driving masterclass. It's for yes. four wheel driving on the beach. And that is from a true expert, our good mate, Tony up there in Rock Hampton. So lots of good tips in that too. Okay, finally, we also produce a weekly e-news. It really covers off everything that's been happening during the week, our episodes mm -hmm. from YouTube, our TV stuff, also magazine articles and our weekly podcast. You can have access to that. Mm -hmm. And there's loads of free resources, loads of education as well and stuff that can probably help you. Also, some great tips, hacks and gear that you can really help to complement what you're doing out there traveling around Oz. Yeah, some really great stuff. Our blogs as well that we do on the website. And look, we send that out every week. Well, we've just started recently sending that out yeah. every week but it's a good way to stay in touch with us as well and so if you don't want to miss out on that it's really easy to add yourself to that email list just jump over onto our website which is thefeelgoodfamily.com and enter your name and email address into that we promise we're not going to spam you it will be really feel good information that will add value to your day and your life and your camping experience as well all right let's get those tire pressures down <laughs> get onto the beach hopefully don't get bogged Yeah. 
This is going to be an awesome episode because we are, for the very first time, heading down to Tiwa Beach. I know, do you know, for something that's kind of been in my backyard growing up on the sunny coast, I've never been over here. So I'm super excited towing the van on the sand for the first time. I'm a little bit nervous about that. Look, we've done plenty of beach driving over our three and a half years, but we have never towed a van, let alone a three plus ton vehicle. So sure we are right. you excited, Jasper? Yeah. Yes, me okay. too. The 79 can do it, Dale. Yeah, let's go. Hopefully the next segment you don't see is us bobbed. Here we go, the fun bit, letting the tyres down. Okay, what we're gonna aim for is 18 PSI, pretty well around both vehicles. The vans, four tyres, the two front tyres on the 79, and the two back ones, we're probably gonna put at about 20 PSI because there's a little bit more weight there. We'll see how that goes. We can always go down from there. We're gonna get onto that. That should take about 15 minutes to get them all done. And then we'll come back to you with some really good tips that we have found from not only our beach driving, although not under tow with a van, but things that we could help you with that uh, we found out either by watching YouTube, other people, and talking to other travellers. So we'll get to those next. Here we go. Okay, what's really great about this system is that it's through that central command head unit, which is called the ARB Lynx. Uh, we have had some problems with this if you've been watching our show in the past. Well, since having all the rewiring done and everything that's been fitted out in the canopy install over there at McCormack's, they were able to sort it out. There was a power issue, so it has worked ever since we had the canopy done. So thank you, Bodie, and your team for getting it right. What is really great about that centralised system is that the left-hand side compressor or the passenger side compressor, you can predetermine the PSI that you want, whether that is for inflating or de deflating, which is perfect in this instance. So I can actually set it in there, hook the hose up to the valve and just let it do its thing. While that's happening and I'm doing these tyres, Katie's going to be doing the front one so that we can get out of here nice and quick. All right, let's do it. It's my weapon of choice, Dal. I'm going to call this one the Kalula deflator. We've had the Kakadu, the Litchfield, the 80 Mile Beach, this one. I should be collecting them and taking them around Australia with us. This is the Kalula deflator. And do you read me? Hi, babe. Hey, he's out of his van again, babe. Okay, well, I can't get him on the radio, so... Yeah, that's because he's out of his van. Let me just... Did you guys see this one or that one? This one. Okay, they did the far right one. Okay, so the one back towards Nisa? Your right one. So as you're coming down, you kind of go straight. Thank you. Towards you behind. Yeah. Okay, love you, bye. Love you too, bye. Bye. Okay, here we go. All right. Wish me luck, guys. We'll just get over this first little bump here. Now that was pretty straightforward and pretty easy to be honest it was uh, a lot lot better than I expected no stress at all happy days what do you think go Dad! <laughs> Good job, Dad! <laughs> 
Thank you, mate. Oh, there you go. That, that was pretty great. exciting. It's a bit scary for all of us. Yeah, look, it is always a little bit nervy when you're doing something for the first time. And yep. like I say, we've we've been on the beach plenty of time and spent time on the beach uh, just with the four-wheel drive, but not this four-wheel drive, only the Hilux, and it was an automatic. Yeah. So being manual, manual, considering how to actually use this transmission, low range, high range. So what I did is I chose low range, uh, and I started in second gear just to help me get you know a little bit more gear ratio there to smoothly get onto the beach. I gave it a bit, but I, I didn't really push it. It just kind of it really shows you that by letting that tire pressure, the most important thing really, out, then you, you end up in such a better you know position of oh, yeah. traction because the tire is longer, not wider, and we might. Uh, show you what we learned from other youtubers about that a little bit later so all right oh we've got about 15 kilometers down to area seven or zone seven uh but we're actually going to choose to camp down at zone four all right so we'll uh we'll get the drain up in a little bit as well and get you some of these beautiful shots we could not have picked a better weather time to come here it is absolutely stunning That's amazing. all right let's do it Nothing better than driving on a beach. I just absolutely love it. All right, here we go. We're about to get to the start of the camping zones. Hi. Uh, now from Noosa end, or the southern end of Tiwa, it is zone seven and then it moves up to double island point rainbow beach and then it goes up to zone one obviously now we booked into zone seven but then we just caught up with some friends before we got over here and they said you know what there's not going to be anyone there the perfect spot that's flat beautiful grass area easy to access for caravans that are as large as ours is zone four so we're going to put the drone up here we are just coming up to the start of the camping area now and we'll get you some beautiful shots. Here we go. We haven't set up camp yet and it is getting on it's almost 5 p.m uh, and look that is really because of the tides obviously you want to travel down to the beach as close to low tide as possible and yeah. particularly this beach it's everywhere you uh you see online or talk to other people who are regulars or locals say you, you've really got to go at low tide and really check your tide times so mm -hmm. we've got a few tips to tell you what we're just doing okay we've just pulled up because our, our new friends Yes, Ken and Bernadette have gone on a little bit of a, a wander around to see where there are some really good sites and make it a bit easier for us to get into, which is just amazing. Oh, so lovely. So, yeah, so we'll, we're happy for that. So they're on a, a radio channel. They're on a charter channel. We're actually on 13, which means that we don't interrupt anyone else and we could still chat to each mm. other. But, look, the speed limits uh, vary. They start at 50 kilometres an hour and then they go up to 80 kilometres an hour and basically all the road rules apply. Yes. Yeah, It's. I think it's easy to sort of forget that when you come down on the beach because you're sort yeah. of instantly in holiday mode. Yes. But, yeah, seat belts, road rules. No um, alcohol. Uh, you there know, are just, police and rangers. Yeah, when we were on Fraser Island, mm. I got breathalyzed twice over yeah. there, and they were even checking vehicles for for mods, Modi yeah. yeah, for modifications. So, look, you know, just be prepared to yeah be prepared. follow the rules. Yeah. Okay, we sat on fifty-five kilometres an hour. It's so quiet. 
I can see that it could get very busy and everything we've there'd heard be a, from... an odd rat bag or two. So just yeah. be aware of that if you've got kids. On the weekends and school holidays, everything we've heard is, yeah, of course, it's super popular and it's yeah. so close to Noosa and so easily accessible. So loads of people come over. Yeah. And another thing, we've got a vehicle come towards us now. So when you are driving, make sure that you use your indicator to really make it very clear to people that are oncoming what direction you're going and also for the people behind you mm. so that you know there's no confusion and everyone knows exactly what your intentions are make them very clear as yeah. well make sure that you've got a national parks pass yeah that's super important you need the permit to drive and access yeah. on the beach and obviously you also need to pay your camp fees mm -hmm. which you can do online it's a really easy process we must have set up an account when we first went over to fraser because all yeah. of our details were just in there i just logged into the account boom it was done in five minutes you do have to select though when you book online what camp zone you're going to mm -hmm. be in but i believe that i mean we're going to change zones and it's just a matter of getting in touch with the rangers to say okay. we're actually camping in zone four now instead of zone seven so yeah fantastic look yeah. there are plenty of spaces mm -hmm. along here um but uh but there's no designated <coughs> oh there we go <laughs> copy mate No worries, mate. We'll head up that way. Now, Ken didn't sound 100% confident, <laughs> did he? As you're coming up the beach, there's a few freshwater creeks coming out, but it's, you know, they're, they're no problem. It's just it gets a bit bumpy. Ken, over. Thanks, mate. Here's one now. Yeah, okay, so that that's great, isn't it? You know, and he's really cares about yeah. uh, how we're tracking. He's, uh, he's really looking after us, a bit of a regular, so thank you, mate. Um, all right, here is a little bit of a, a washout, if you want to call it that, uh, where the fresh water probably is coming off the mainland. Here's a couple here, Jasper. So yeah, so just, you know, drive to your conditions. You could see if you were flying along here at 80 and you hit one of these. Yeah, no, that would not yeah, be fun. My gosh, it would be not good for the vehicle, but it'd be even worse for the passengers. So yeah, yeah just take it easy. There's there's no need to, to be a rat bag, is there? No. Look at that for a camp spot, those yeah, people. That's All right, awesome. I'll get back to concentrating. Yeah, you concentrate. What I was going to say is that there's no designated campsites within the zone, so it's pull up, find a spot. So yeah. obviously when it's not busy like this, awesome. You've got so much choice, but if it was busy, you know, you'd have to, yeah, find your spot in amongst others. All right, the other thing is to realise that there's near to zero cell service in a lot Good of parts point. of this beach. So. The main thing for you to do is take a screenshot of the tide times because that way you can still access the tide times. You know, if you're staying for a long period of time, make sure that you've got it with you or a book on it. But yeah, a good screenshot on your phone will save the day. Uh, we're going to give the Starlink a run. We'll yeah. see how that goes. But yeah, hopefully it faces the beach. <laughs> yeah, we're about to find out. All right, we'll get a move on now. A bit of soft sand, boom. Look at that. There's a lot of big mountains. There is out there, isn't there, Jasper? So beautiful. All right. And a very late, almost turning night time, the tide almost gets about 100 minutes away. Yeah, it's yeah. low tide at 5.30 today, mate. Yeah. Yeah. It may happen again. Yeah. So I'm just wallowing other people. All right, let's do it.
Oh, stunning morning. Look at this for a shot. Got the time-lapse camera going on over there. Hopefully capture that fantastic sunrise. All right, good morning. It has just gone 5.30. Little Jasperu is still fast asleep in bed, lucky little bugger. Katie's gonna be bringing us out a coffee. Very unfortunately, the horse flies, or March flies as they're known, and it is March, they're still awake. And there's plenty of them, and they've got a nasty bite in them as well. Yeah, look at that. Hey. Cheers. A bit excited, got our new camp chairs. We'll tell you about these a little bit later, but... Uh, I need thongs. We need What we need is more time to sit in them. Yeah, we do. Don't we? I need a pair of thongs too, I'm in Jasper's. Okay, let's talk about <laughs> a couple of tips. Ooh. Lucky you're so tiny that Good you morning. can fit in Jasper's. <laughs> oh, we can't really fit in them. My toes can. <laughs> See that? That's what Jasper bought Katie for her birthday. Isn't that lovely? He even picked it out. Yeah. He's a good boy. He is. He's very, he's very oh thoughtful, God. we have to say. These March flies, what are they doing awake? Oh, bring on April. Oh. I don't know if that's actually true. Um, I got told that the female ones are the ones that have got a little green head. Oh, yeah? And they're the ones that bite. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> okay, let's talk about here. So at the end of this episode, we're actually going to feature a masterclass on sand driving. And this is delivered by a four-wheel drive instructor, okay, Tony Davies, yes. who was up in Rockhampton. We met him and we went out and had an instructional adventure day uh, quite a while back now. It would be almost three, three years, years ago, ago yeah. two and a half years ago. And that was up at Byfield around near the Five Rocks area. Absolutely stunning location. And he was able to, yeah, give us some really easy to understand clear tips yeah. on what to know before you hit the sand so that would be the best uh, advice we can share with you is at the end of this episode yeah. <laughs> expert advice yes real experts <laughs> okay let's talk about the fees and there's not many cash bus businesses anymore is there no unless no. you're a ferry operator you've got one yes yeah. so the ferry uh was twelve dollars per vehicle for us it does vary depending on your <laughs> your size so you can check all of the fees on the website but basically for us to come across that no, wasn't $12 a vehicle I think it was 22 in total yeah somehow he worked that out but um unfortunately you don't pay the ferryman till you get to the other side isn't quite the case yeah no that's cash everyone else yeah. doesn't get on you do need cash they won't accept any other no. form of payment it takes like a minute to literally cross the Noosa River so it's not bad really when you yeah. think about how many vehicles and runs they're doing. They started, it's a, it's a like, dollar a second. Yeah. <laughs> they start at 5.30 in the morning. Yeah. Um, that could be seasonal. You'd, again, you'd have to check the website. But they basically run all day. Back and, and two, forth, back and two forth. ferries. Yeah. Most of the time. Yeah. Okay, there was only one operating when we went across. But no, it's, yeah. it's uh, very easy. And to be honest, so convenient. Oh. 22 bucks is what it is and that's okay. Yeah. 100% awesome. Um, as far as the camp fees and the vehicle permit oh, goes, my arm's gonna fall the off. Queensland Parks Wildlife is where you'll get both of those things. Very easy to do, book online. The campground fees, I think they worked out to be $7 a person a night. I think they do a family bundle if you've got a couple of kids or more, but for seven bucks, I mean, woo, how awesome is that? Wow. And then as far as the vehicle permit goes, they do this really interesting thing where you can buy a day pass, a week pass, a month pass, or an annual. The day pass is not for a 24 hour period though, it's only for a calendar day. So for us, we would have needed two day passes to cover being here yesterday and this morning. So we had to buy a weekly pass, which was about $35. So that's fine. They do have um, license registration plate monitoring cameras all along the beach and camping areas so it's not worth the risk in not getting a vehicle permit right. it's like i think it's like 215 dollars fine and there's signs everywhere along the beach that say you know if you don't have your pass basically you're going to get a fine so revenue raising katie well look i guess it goes to the upkeep of the campgrounds there's 
huge bin facilities all along the campground which is awesome which means you don't have to take your rubbish with you there are bathroom facilities at some of the zones as well so I mean yeah I guess they need it to keep the rangers doing what the rangers do best exactly all right now there are no domestic animals allowed being operated by parks and wildlife yeah actually there is a sign on the beach that says no domestic animals past this point and that's actually interestingly where the speed limit goes from 50 to 80 kilometers per hour on yep. the beach which is in our opinion just far too fast it, i mean it, it almost doesn't make sense to bring yourself into such a pristine environment like this and then scream up and down the beach 80 kilometers an hour is pretty quick and what happens is at these camp spots you've got kids and people playing or people might pull up and fish uh, you know and then next minute people zoom, zooming past you just uh, anyway tell you what if you can take out a couple of march flies when you're flying down the beach though that'd be <laughs> ideal <laughs> they're full on aren't they relentless oh right, what's on our list anything else uh no fees fees dogs sand driving master class yep. that is it all right awesome we will enjoy this coffee thank you beautiful wifey yeah, what a beautiful <laughs> I know what it was oh. the last thing why on earth would you take all that effort and preparation and planning and nerves to get to such a beautiful location and spend one night and then leave that why is a very good ball? question why would you I know <laughs> okay there are a few reasons but uh, one of the main ones is that the 79 series and a couple of other vehicles in the toyota range and depending on the year had a recall on a certain part on that vehicle and it's something to do with a, a heat uh, resistant something on the exhaust and the diesel uh, particle filter and look I, i'm actually not 100 percent sure but toyota's rung me a number of times and said it's in you can come and book it in oh no it's not here Oh, you're booked in. Oh, no, we haven't got your booking. <laughs> so, and that was down at, uh, at Harvey Bay there at Pialba. Well, it's all happening, and it's happening rather quickly. Can you please get the vehicle here yeah. on Friday morning at 8 a.m.? Which means that we are here for a very short period, unfortunately. But you know what? A good recce for us and a good opportunity to, to see how we would manage it and could we manage it and how oh, would the van tow and amazing so okay. good to talk about giving you confidence all you yeah. need to do is do something once and you know try not to yell at each other and you're all sweet oh i know i was a bit nervous but mm. so awesome and now we know we can you know we'll come back when the march flies aren't here and come and set up camp for a week and just yeah. enjoy being here and we're going to get the same question i know but again what is the camp area that we are at we are at zone four and this is where we found there's a number of these kind of flat grassy areas that go straight onto the sand and you can see that tide last night comes so far up the beach so really check your tide times and you will be sweet
comes. You got this, Daddy. They normally have underbody wash for vans as well, but unfortunately, that's in maintenance. So we're gonna have to do it all by hand with the high pressure gurney. But pretty well, you're looking at $5 for six and a half minutes. I think that's it. Up there it says $5 for 12 and a half minutes of air. So if you wanna use their compressors, you can also pay for that. Otherwise, it looks like we're gonna probably need about $10, 13 minutes, six and a half minutes per go. Let's get into it so we can get out of here. First one is to drop your tyre pressures, we've done that, makes a great big footprint, helps you keep on top of the sand. The second one is momentum, so you want to, you don't want to drive fast so you're bouncing all over the place and risk losing control, but you want to keep um, fast enough that you keep on top of that sand. So I, in, the, in the big V8 I can be in four wheel drive, high range and use my lower gears, first and second gear. The auto gearbox you should always be, be putting it in gear, put it in the sport or manual mode, tell it what gear to be in. Um, and then the next one that goes along with, with momentum is your steering. You want to keep the steering as straight as possible. The sand track will go like this and your car will move from side to side. You've got to resist the urge to turn because every time you turn the wheel, there's more sand pushing against the side walls of the tyres. There's more resistance and it slows you down. And the fourth one, in all these modern vehicles, they have traction aids. I'm still in high range, four wheel drive when I'm going to be driving up here. So my vehicle stability control and my traction control is on. They work against you in sand. So I'm going to turn those off. In the Toyota, you, there's a skiddy car button. Looks like a car with some skids behind it. Call it the skiddy car button. Kiwi accent. Sounds a bit funny probably. But you push and hold the skiddy car button for about five seconds and you'll get two lights. You'll get TRC and VSC. Traction control and vehicle stability control off. Because otherwise, you're driving up a sandy slope a low traction surface, your wheel starts to spin, the car thinks you've lost control, puts the brakes on and cuts the power to the motor. You think we're getting up a sandy hill with no power and the brakes on? No, we're not. So there's your masterclass of four things. Tire pressure, steering, momentum, and turn off your technology. Awesome. All right, let's do it. Thanks for watching. Please do like, subscribe, and share our channel. And if you'd like more information on full-time RV travel and living, visit our website, thefeelgoodfamily.com. There you'll find loads of free resources, our weekly podcast, caravan cooking recipes, our monthly Go RV magazine articles, and much more. We look forward to seeing you next week. Take care of yourself and your family, and happy trails.
is a video window up, window up. Okay, okay there we go. Na 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 na